So welcome back. Uh, after obtaining the initial basic feasible solution and confirming that your solution is not degenerate, the next thing is to check whether your solution is actually optimal. And there are various methods of testing for optimality. We have the modified distribution method. The modified distribution method, which is also known as the UV method. Then we have the stepping stone method. So in this illustration, I'm going to use the modified distribution method to test for optimality. So if the solution is not optimal, we're going to try and optimize it. And then we check whether the solution is now optimal or not. So using the modi, the modified distribution method or the UV method. So the first thing you label the rows as UIs. So this becomes U1, U2, U3. And then you label the columns as the Vs, V1, V2, V3, and V4. Now you know why the method is called the UV method. Then for the allocated cells, for the allocated cells, and here we have six allocated cells. This is one of them. Another one is here. Another one is here. Another one is here. Another one is here. The last one is here. For the allocated cells, you write down this equation. You solve this equation. You solve this equation. Ui plus Vj is equal to Cij. You solve those equations. For example, in this cell, this cell corresponds to U1 and V2. So that would be U1 plus V2 is equal to Cij is the cost per unit in that particular cell. So here we have one. So you write one. So that's an equation that needs to be solved. U1 plus V2 is equal to one. In the next allocated cell, which is this one, this corresponds to U2 plus V1. And the cost in that cell is two. In the next allocated cell, this one, I don't know that my pointer is working. In this cell here, this corresponds to U2 plus V3 is equal to, the cost here is five. So this is five. In the next allocated cell, we have, where well, we are allocating 50, we have U3 plus V what? V2 is equal to three. Then in the next one, where we are allocating 250, that is U3 plus V3 is equal to three. And finally, the last one is U3 plus V4 is equal to is equal to two. We need to solve those equations. You see, but for now we don't know any of the values. Huh? There are so many unknowns. So what you do to get started, you do this: identify row or column with the highest number or the maximum number of allocations. So check whether there is a row. Like in the first row, we have only one allocation. In the second row, we have two allocations. In the third row, we have three allocations. In the first column, we have one allocation. In the second column, we have two allocations. In the third row, we have Two allocation in the final row uh, column we have one allocation so you check whether there is a row or column which has the maximum number of allocations in our case we have row three with three allocations 
So if it is a row, you assign that the value of u in that row, you assign it zero. So you call it, you call that one zero. If it was a column, we do the same. So if it was column two, we would come here and say v2 is equal to zero. So you pick the row or column with the highest number of allocations and assign it zero. You assign either the u or the v there zero. If there is a tie, you break it randomly. So this is how we get started now. So because row three has the highest number of allocations, we set u3 to zero. And then using that, you come to equations and try and solve for other values. So if you know u3 is zero, it means that you can use this equation here to obtain that v2 is equal to three, okay? And then you can use this equation, you can use this equation here. If u3 is equal to zero, it means that uh, v3 is equal to zero, uh, sorry, v3 is equal to, uh, is equal to three. And then when you solve this, it means that v4 is equal to two. So you can just fill them so that we don't get lost. V3, this is a, a three now. This is a two. Uh, v2 is a three. Okay. So now we have much more information. So if we know that V2 is equal to three, we can solve this. using V2 is equal to three. So if you put three here, it means that U1 is equal to minus two. Okay, so that is a U1. Then do you have any other U1 elsewhere? No, we don't. So using this equation here, if, ah, sorry, we don't need that. Yeah, V3, using V3 there. If V3 is equal to three, if this is equal to three, it means that U2 is equal to positive two. So this is a two, let's just fill them. So this is a two. And then u1 is a minus one. And then what else is remaining? u2, we already have u2 somewhere. Yeah, so because we have u2 here, if you put this one at two, if you put a two there, it means that v1, is equal to zero. So this is equal to zero. So we have solved for all the values of U's and the V's. So that's the first thing. You do that to all the, to the, all the allocated cells. So for all the allocated cells, you evaluate UI plus VJ is equal to CIJ. Now the next thing is for the unallocated cells. for the unallocated cells. So for the unallocated cells, we calculate what we call the cell evaluations. Which is given by this formula here. We call it DIJ. The cell evaluation is called DIJ, which is equal to CIJ minus UI plus VJ, okay? Where this is a difference, then CIJ, for every allocated cell, we need to get the cost of that particular cell. And already we have identified the values of U's and J's. So you take that, you sum, you take away. Uh, so the first unallocated cell, 
the first unallocated cell is, rather I can do it here. Let me do it here so that I don't need to scroll a lot. The first unallocated cell is this one. So we are going to get D11. So that is my DIJ, yeah? That's my DIJ. So D11 will be equal to C11, the cell in the cost in that cell, which is three minus U plus V. U in that cell, U in that row and column in that, uh, the column value in that uh, corresponding to that cell. So in this case, we have minus one plus a zero because that is u1 plus v1. Maybe I should have written in full. Huh? Uh, so this will be c11 minus u1 plus v1, which is three minus into u1 is minus one plus v1 is a zero. So you evaluate that. But as that is three, minus minus one, which is a four. The next unallocated cell is this one. So that is D row one, column three. So the cell value there is seven. The cost per unit is seven. Minus, you add what? Minus one plus, the column there is V3, which is equal to three. So that is seven minus two, which is five. The next cell and allocated is this one. So this is D one four. The cost in that cell is four minus U plus V of that cell. So this is minus one plus two which is four minus one, which is three. So we're done with row one. Row two, we start from D two one, row two, column two, sorry. This cell here, unallocated. So which gives us six minus, uh, minus, Okay, uh, so let's proceed. Here there's a correction, U1. U1, we got minus two, and here we wrote minus one. So this is minus two. That means we're going to recalculate all the values that were involving U1. Yeah, so once we make that correction, it is going to affect uh, the values of D11, D13, D14, as indicated here, so we're going to add one, each one of them. So this will be plus five, plus six, plus four. Then let's go to D22, uh, which is this cell. And we're saying the cost there is six minus U in that cell is two plus V in that column is three. So that is a six minus a five, which is a one. Then the next unallocated cell is here, which is D24. Where the cost is nine minus two plus two, which is nine minus four, which is five. Then the last row we have D31, where this is eight minus eight minus, uh, this is zero plus, zero plus V uh, one is zero also. I hope that has not affected other values. 
Uh, so the next uh, cell there is a D31. So that is a, a zero plus zero. So this remains an eight. Then we have, that's all. So we have that. So those are the cell evaluations. What do they mean? So once you get this, D, these are now what we are calling the DIJs. These are the DIJs. And we are saying these are the conditions. If all DIJs are positive numbers, if they are positive numbers, that means that solution is optimal and unique. That means there is no other optimal solution that exists. Then if the DIJs are equal to zero, all of them, then this means that the solution is again optimal, but an alternative solution exists. Alternative solution exists. That means if there are two of you who are solving the problem, you may have different allocations for the initial basic feasible solution. You may have different allocations, but the total cost will be the same. The total cost will be the same. Then if, if at least if there is at least one DIJ which is negative, that is if any of these numbers is negative, even a single one of them, the solution is not optimal. It's not optimal. And what do you do when the solution is not optimal? You go to the next phase. You optimize it. You optimize it. So that means you need to make some adjustments to see if you are going to get the optimal solution, if it exists. So in the example that we were solving, the, all the DIJs are positive numbers. That means the solution that we got using the VAM, this is the optimal solution. And this is the optimal allocation. The way it is, that's the optimal allocation. Okay. So I want to quickly show you, suppose some of these values were negative. Suppose the solution was not negative and you need to optimize it. How do you proceed? Let's do that in our next, in our next video.